a little late to the party on this one, probably a good eight months or so, if I'm not mistaken. This grill dropped back in uh, February of this year. Better late than never, right? But in my defense, it was a hell of a hectic year. Nevertheless, today we are finally gonna take a look at Traeger's newest addition, well newest even though it was back, it's still the most recent addition to their pellet grill lineup, the Ironwood XL. Oh God, that name sounds just like a porn title. This will be the third or maybe fourth Traeger I've used in my life. And I'll start the video up by saying, call me a shill if you will, but they've all treated me really well. I've enjoyed using every single one of them. I'm a big fan. Now I know some of you guys are gonna just run to the comments quicker than white girls in Ugg boots flock to Starbucks in October for pumpkin spice lattes. That's no smoker. That doesn't use real wood. That's a damn easy bake oven. Look, Dale, I feel like his name's probably Dale. I have, I think, eight grill slash smokers in my backyard. I know, I have a little bit of a problem. But out of that eight, five of them run on wood and or charcoal or a combination of both. So I am a big fan of the live fire cooking. I love it. But like I've said in many videos in the past, I feel like all types of these cookers, different types of grills and smokers and whatnot, they all have a place in the backyard, depending on what you're cooking, how much time and effort you wanna put into it. Sometimes you don't have all day to tend to fire, but you want a nice juicy brisket or a pork butt or some delicious smoked ribs. And rather you traditional smoke or purist won't admit it or not, it's hard to beat the convenience of a pellet smoker. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. This video is also not intended to be a comparison against other types of smoker companies out there, although that probably would be a fun video to do at some point in the future. It's meant to be like a first impressions kind of overview of the features the new Traeger Ironwood has to offer. So simmer down with the team, I don't give a fuck, insert whatever company somebody's gonna boast in the comments is best and better for whatever reason and defend that company like they started the damn things themselves, even though they've probably ever used another brand of smoker in their life, which I've always found is interesting. Let's not turn smoke and meats into the next Apple versus Android debate. Honestly, these days, there are a bunch of great companies out there making smokers of all types, and it really boils down to features and budget Budget as to which one is gonna fit a particular person best. Hell, I reckon you could make a damn fine piece of barbecue on most of them if you know what the hell you're doing. Now, full disclosure, I always like to try to be as transparent as I possibly can with you guys about any relationships I have with the companies of products. That way you don't feel like there's any ulterior motive or hidden compensations going on. I did get this grill from Traeger for free for this review, but this is not a sponsored or paid for video in any way. Traeger does not have creative control over any part of this video, and they don't get to see this before I make this public to you guys. And to their credit, I've had this grill in a box, on a pallet, in my garage for the better part of six months or more, and they haven't said anything about it. So, no pushiness from this company, which is something I really appreciate. Lastly, any Traeger links I will link below will be affiliate links, which means if you do use one of those links to purchase a Traeger product, I will get a small commission, which is greatly appreciated because that goes back to helping support the channel and what we do here. Speaking of supporting what we do here, whiskey and cooking outdoors goes together like peanut butter and jelly. So before we get cracking on this new grill, let's take a second to thank the actual sponsor of this video, Visky. If you are looking for high quality glasses or barware, Visky has got you covered. It's one of the reasons we chose them for our own merch when we dropped our new branded Visky whiskey tasting glass recently. They consult with professional bartenders when they're making their products so everything is really well thought out, functional, and looks great. Funny story. I started using their whiskey tasting glasses because I really liked the, the form and function. They looked really great and I thought they worked really great. Then like a month later, I jumped on Amazon because I needed a few more of Allison and I's favorite whiskey tumbler and guess who makes them? That's right, Visky. Didn't even realize it when we bought them originally, just knew I liked them, but they were made by Visky. Point is, whether you need tasting glasses, rocks glasses, flasks, decanters, cocktails, smoking kits, Visky probably has something to fit the bill. They also have this sweet spinning whiskey glass. Now, come on, 
it's pretty cool shit. Bisky for sure has some great stuff to help you with any kind of barware you may be looking for. So if you need some new glasses for sipping your whiskey around the barbecue, check out Bisky at the link I'll list below. Use code JEREMY15 to get 15% off your purchase. Big thanks again to the folks at Bisky for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. All right, now that we got our drink sorted, let's check out this Ironwood XL. Ooh, that one didn't last long. I'm parched. It's hot out here. The Ironwood XL is the new and improved version of the Ironwood series. The OG Ironwood 885, which was the predecessor to this grill, was the grill I recommended to people the most if they wanted to get into a Traeger because I felt like it did the best job of kind of straddling value for features. Well, they seem to be doing the same thing with this new Ironwood XL because you're getting like 80 to 90%, I would say, of the features of their flagship Timberline, but at like half the price which even though my math skills are that of a first grader with a learning disability, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Seriously though, y'all, math hurts my brain. It's bad. The Ironwood XL is the XL because it is the bigger of the two new Ironwood series grills. Although I can't get past the fact that that name sounds a lot like something if you clicked on it, it may give your computer a virus. Although to be fair, it is a pretty impressive size package. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Good one. Gee, I'm sorry I had to. Traeger's never given me another grill again, I swear to God. The mentions of this bad boy are 48 to the top of the grill, 70 inches wide, 25 inches deep, and 34 inches to the shelf. It has 925 square inches of cooking space divided over two levels with the top having 330 and the bottom having 594. On the top, you have one single grate, while on the bottom, you have the same kind of three-piece system that they did on the Timberline, which I'm a big fan of when you're cleaning. It's a lot easier to move these around or take these smaller grate sections out rather than dealing with one big ass grate. And just like the Timberline, these dudes are thick with a double C's. They are big, heavy duty grates. On the Timberline, they are stainless steel, while on this Ironwood, they are ceramic coated. And as far as height inside this thing, you've got about 13 inches of clearance, which is a little bit less than the three-tiered system of the Timberline. Nevertheless, it's a nice, big, tall, I mean, you could fit whole turkeys, chickens, whatever. Strager's saying you can fit like eight chickens or 16 racks of ribs, think like eight pork butts, something like that. It's, it's a shitload of grub. Let's be honest. Grill companies a listed capacity, you'd be packing this shit in like sardines. You better put some Astro Glide on this shit before you start loading up your grill, because it is gonna be a tight fit. <laughs> but to be fair, this isn't just Traeger. All grill companies do this. I think it's more of like, to give you an idea of what could fit, not really what should fit. Nevertheless, as you can see, it's a nice big grilling space. For most people, this is more space than you're ever gonna need for entertaining and cooking for your family. One of the features that they used to only include on their Timberline flagship series that they decided to include on the Ironwoods this time around is the double wall insulated cook chamber, which I think is a super nice feature. Not so much for me down here in the South where it's unfortunately, we have no seasons. It's just hot as Satan's nutsack all year round. For you guys up north, when it's like zero degrees outside, you're gonna burn through a hell of a lot of pellets trying to keep this thing to temp. Well, the double wall insulation fixes that problem, really helps you keep a stable temperature, even in cold weather. So nice that they included it this time around. The new Ironwoods are still rocking the same D2 drive auger system and all that that the grills have had in them for quite a while with Traeger, which has always been super reliable and great for me. Your hopper over here holds 22 pounds of pellets, which is nice because that will fit most any of your standard full bags of pellets. And you'll notice no chimney. The old ironwoods, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't had my ironwood in a while, but I think those had chimneys. This takes over the downdraft exhaust system that they put in the Timberline, which is this little slot in the back here in lieu of a chimney. It's supposed to help circulate heat and smoke in the cook chamber and also minimize hot spots and better convection. Down below, we do now have a nice, big, sturdy metal shelf, which is nice because the old ironwoods did not have a shelf, which I thought was kind of a missed opportunity. We also have the same K 
keg system that they started on the Timberline series where all your ashes, your grease, your all your crap, your waste from grilling all goes into this one little keg. You take your liner out, throw it away, problem solved. I've had this on my Timberline for a while now and I really think this is the best clean out system I've seen in a smoker. And then of course we do have some wheels on the bottom to help you maneuver your cooking station around your backyard wherever you want it. And can I say probably the best pellet release system I've ever used in a smoker. I know, I know I'm probably getting far too excited about the pellet release hopper thing. <laughs> It's really not that exciting, but I've used so many pellet grills that do it wrong. It's either in the back at a weird angle, so when you dump the pellets, they fly out everywhere and go all over the damn place, or it's not at the bottom, so once you use it, there's still a bunch of pellets left in the damn hopper, which is annoying. This thing is right at the bottom. Put a bag or a bucket down below it. You pull it, all the pellets fall into it. You close it, done. Put in new pellets, you're good to go. I know, it, they should all be this way. We shouldn't even have to have a conversation about this, but strangely enough, not all pellet hopper dropper systems are created equal. Also, as we mentioned earlier, it does hold 22 pounds of pellets, which is nice for those overnight long cooks. Don't have to ever worry about running out of pellets. And of course we have a pellet sensor there, which is nice because then you can keep an eye on your pellet level from the app, no matter where you're at. Which is another thing I really love about these new Traeger grills and the combination with the app. It allows you to do these long cooks, your pork butts, your briskets and stuff like that. And you can check on everything remotely. So you're not a slave to the grill all day, which is really nice. But we'll talk about that more later. Another thing we have carryover from the Timberline series. I know it's like a broken record. If you don't see a pattern here, like I mentioned, there's a ton of features that carried over from the more expensive model on this guy. We now have the pop and lock PAL system on this guy, which I love. It allows you to easily clip on and off accessories like this folding shelf that I have on here. There's also like a paper towel, butcher paper roll. There's little caddies for your seasonings and all kinds of cool little hooks and stuff that you can easily snap on and off of this rail. And if you already have some for like your flat rock or your timberline, all of them have the same system. So you only have to buy the accessories once and then you can move them from grill to grill depending on which grill you're using. So really nice feature. And last but certainly not least, we have a very nice generous shelf over on this side. Now I will say it is just a shelf. It isn't like the Timberline, which has an induction burner on it, which is really nice. It is just a shelf, but it's a nice big shelf. And honestly, for most folks, they would probably rather have a $2,000 less grill and not have a side burner. And I think you could actually even add it down the road because in the back, they have the plug where the induction burner normally does plug into. So it could potentially be something down the road you could add on if you really want it. The control system on the Traeger is one of the best in the game in my book. It is a full color, nice big, touch LED screen, it's really awesome, looks super high tech. You have a knob here that you can twist to either scroll through your menus or pick a temperature, you press it in to make a selection. It's just really nice. For a grill, it is a crazy cool display screen. And for some of you negative Nancys that said in my Timberline review, Well, yeah, that's great until it gets wet and then the whole thing stops working. Well, this thing must be as watertight as a duck's ass because after two years of my Timberline being outside in Florida, which by the way, rains all the time, it's humid, it's swampy, that thing is still in perfect working order. And it's not on like a covered porch or anything. It sits out in my backyard on the patio. I do keep it covered most of the time, but I've forgotten plenty and it's been rained on numerous times and still works like a champ. You also have two ports right here for probes that do come with the grill. You can either use the wired probes in these ports or this thing does work wirelessly with the meter probes. And if you haven't checked out the meter probes yet, what are you doing with your life? Go check them out immediately. They're pretty badass. The quick and dirty is they connect wirelessly to the grill and your Traeger app and it allows you to monitor your meat closer than a jealous girlfriend. You need to run to the store and get some more beer while you're in the middle of a brisket cook, no problem. You can run miles away and monitor the temperature of your meat. I mean, to be honest, the app is complete overkill for what you need to accomplish a cook, but it is super convenient. I freaking love it. It doesn't only let you monitor your meat temps, it lets you monitor the inside temperature of the grill, lets you set cook timers, you can adjust the temperatures, you can put it to keep warm mode, you can turn the grill off, you can basically control everything about your cook from miles away, which again, when you're doing these crazy long cooks, 
It is so convenient. It is so much better than being slave to being within reach of a grill all day long so you can keep an eye on the temperature and feed logs. Not that I don't love doing that sometimes, but sometimes you just want a brisket and you don't want to sit around the house all day. The app also has a bunch of great recipes. There's all kinds of additional stuff other than just controlling the grill. Matt Pittman, one of my favorite dudes, Meat Church, if you haven't seen his YouTube channel, definitely check it out. But he's on there as one of the cooks. There's a bunch of other great cooks on there. They've got all their recipes you can download straight from the app and then just click go and it automatically puts all the temperature and times and stuff into your grill for you. Do you need it to do a cook? No, but does it make it awesome and super convenient? Yes, the app is fantastic. This isn't a detailed long-term review of this thing because I've only put a couple cooks on it to this point, but everything has turned out great. And I don't suspect it's gonna be any different than my Timberline that I've been cooking on for well over a year now. Shit, probably close to two years now because it's got the same auger, the same heating rod, the same downdraft system. I mean, it's, it's the exact same chassis. It's the same grill with a slightly lower chamber up here, one less shelf, no cabinet below and no burner on the side. But as far as how it cooks, it's the exact same grill. So I don't expect long-term I'm gonna have any differences from this than I do on my Timberline. And I have done all kinds of meats on that thing. Everything you can imagine. We've even done side dishes. We've baked stuff like baked beans, uh, mac and cheese, Hasselback potatoes. We've cooked desserts on it. We've put that thing through its paces and it's always performed fantastic. And for all you naysayers that say pellet grills are not as good as a wood-fired grill or a stick burner, I'll just say this. Go check out a video. I'll put it over here. I did a while back where we did a blind taste test with the Timberline, which again, same cooking, same basic grill as this, cook-wise, and my uh, mill scale that I have, which is a big old custom-built offset smoker. Awesome grill, by the way. We did a blind taste. We had friends over. I cooked ribs on both, and we did a blind taste, and the damn Traeger won. I was surprised. Now, it only won by a little bit, and just to be fair, I did in a blind taste pick the mill scale ribs because I did think they had a little more depth of flavor than the Traeger ones, but overall, of all the people here, the Traeger actually got more votes. So for all you guys that say that you can't pump out barbecue as good on a pellet grill as you can on a stick burner, I don't know, man, to each his own. Go check out that video. It was a surprising result for me as well. In general, I think Traeger knocked it out of the park on this one. I think they put a ton of features in this thing and bang for the buck, it's hard to beat this in the lineup of their current grills, but nothing's perfect. So what are some of the cons? What are some of the bad things that I've noticed? Not really bad, but in comparison to the Timberline especially, the second and lower shelf are kind of close. If you were trying to do like a chicken or a turkey or something big, you don't really have enough room, even with this at its highest point, to do that. You would have to put your bigger stuff on top or take this top shelf out. I wish there was a little more space in between these two. At the end of the day, you put your bigger stuff up here, put your skinnier stuff, your briskets, your ribs and stuff down here. It can be worked around. Nevertheless, I wish there was a little more height here. Again, I feel like I'm being a little picky, but there are two casters and two fixed wheels on the bottom. I really prefer four casters because it just makes it a little easier when you're negotiating it. Maybe that's me because I move my grills around a lot because I have so many of them. Most people probably set their grill in the same spot, never move it, so it wouldn't make a big deal. And it is still relatively easy to move, but I do kind of wish it had four casters. Lastly, and again, I don't know if you could say this is a negative because it just kind of is what it is, but I will put it in the negative category because it's going to turn a lot of people off is the price. Even though this is a far better value proposition than the Timberline at 2K to the 4K on the Timberline or close to 4K on the Timberline, still $2,000 for a grill is gonna be outside of a lot of people's budget, outside of a lot of people's price range. Donnie, you're out of your element. Still probably not your every man's everyday smoker because $2,000 is a lot of cheddar. But I will say, I think bang for the buck, it's worth it. Other than that, I can't say I've run into a lot of downsides. I've enjoyed cooking on it. I enjoyed cooking on the Timberline. I think their new grills they've been coming out with are really top notch. And for half the price at 80 to 90% of the kind of uh, features you get on this one, I think it's a hard one to beat. I don't know, man, kind of checks all the boxes. All right, folks, well, that will about wrap this one up. But before we get out of here, as always, let's draw the winner for this week's giveaway and then we'll do next week's and go this week's winner is 
Carlos Garcia. Carlos, congratulations, my brother. Thank you for being a subscriber, commenting, liking the video, and all that good stuff. Carlos says, I love these types of videos. Thanks, hashtag truck EDC. That was on the last video we did, which was Harbor Freight Finds for Your Truck EDC. So if you haven't gone and checked that out, definitely go check it out. Well, Carlos, congratulations, my dude. Thanks again. If you will go to our YouTube page, click on the About tab, get the email off of there, email us your mailing address. We will get, what it was the last week? Last week was the uh, oh, the new whiskey hat we just dropped. So we will send you one of the new whiskey hats we just dropped your way, my brother. Scammer warning, before we do this week's giveaway, as always, we announce the winners live on here. So if you see some comments down below telling you, you won something, ignore that shit, you didn't win. We announce winners live in the videos. For this week's video, let's give away, we'll give away a Visky. Um, since we did a Visky as the sponsor on this video, we'll give away one of our merch, one of our branded Viskies we have. Rules are as always, you have to be a subscriber to both channels, both this channel and our After Hours channel. Uh, over there we do our weekly live streams. Got some other content coming on that soon, but for now we just do weekly live streams every Wednesday. If you're not checking those out, definitely come hang out. We have a good time, Wednesdays at eight o'clock. So subscriber to both channels, you gotta smash that like button on this video. You have to sign up for our newsletter. So I'll put a link down below, it's on our website. Then in the comments put, for this week, let's do hashtag <laughs> Team Traeger, which I know some of you rec tech and other brand guys are gonna hate that, but hashtag Team Traeger, hashtag Free Visky. Those are gonna be the two hashtags for this week. And then in the next upload, we will draw a winner live. All right, folks, well, appreciate you guys hanging out for a while today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing stuff. We'd love to have you on board. Hope everybody is having a fantastic week. And we will see you in the next video. I wish I had time to smoke something on this thing tonight. It's actually Halloween as I'm filming this, so I'm about to go take the kids out to do a little trick or treat cooking on this baby. It's very nice. Very nice. Mmm. -hmm. Some good grub. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do a pork butt tomorrow now that I think about it. That's it. Pork butt coming. Pork butt inbound.